Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Jon and today we are studying different methods of painting. Now this time around we'll be using three Stormcast Eternal Shields as our canvases. We're going to start out really simple, utilizing contrast paints and undercoats, so let's just dive right into that. Now, like I said, this is going to be the really, really simple method. We are basically just using contrast paints for this method. We're going to start out with a grazier undercoat, and then we are just going over that with the contrast paint Talisar Blue. Now, because this is a curved shield and not many recesses, this is going to look fairly wonky, but of course you can use this on most models that of course have a little bit more recesses and it will look better. However, to counteract that recesslessness, we are adding another layer of Talisar Blue and that'll smooth it out ever so slightly so it doesn't look as bad. Uh, the main thing is to watch your brush strokes and once you've painted over some bit, don't go over it again just yet so it gets a little bit better. And of course, over the trim, we are going with just a gold paint. This is Retributor Armor. We're just painting that simply on. And after we've painted that on, of course, watching not to go into the blue because fixing up contrast paints can be a hassle. We are adding the Gilliman Fles contrast paint over top of the gold bit. So it'll look a little bit more shiny. Well, not more shiny, has a little bit more depth to it. And that is the really simple method. You could use this for bigger, bigger units for whatever armors you want, or just for trims and armor plates. And it'll be done really quickly, but of course you're not getting a fairly complex method out of this. This has colors, a little bit of depth, but not overly much. Now that we've done the really simple method, let's uh, add a little bit of complexity to it, but still going really, really simple. And now, this time around, no uh, contrast paints, but more shades and dry brushes. Now we're entering a slightly more complex territory, but still quite simple. This is more in line with the classic uh, GW painting method, where we put down a base coat, then we add a little bit of shade, and then we add a little bit of highlight. So that's basically exactly what we're going to do. We start out with Cantor Blue, we're base coating that all over the shield, and then we're going to wash the shield with Null Oil, like every video everywhere tells you to do. Well, not really. And this method is the, mostly used for your basic troops. This is the usual method. It is quick and it is simple and it looks okay. So we start out with the candle blue and we put the shade over and then we're going to find our mid-tone again with layering contour blue over the shaded areas and keeping the shade in the recesses. And you can't really fault this method. It looks okay and for bigger troops it looks fine. Then we're going to take a little bit of Thousand Suns Blue, and we're just dry brushing that over the blue bits. Now we get a little bit of quick and easy highlights, we get those quick and easy shadows, and we get that nice and easy mid-tone. And that's the blue basically done. Now we're starting out with the trim and with the gold, and now we start with uh, Retributor Armor as the base coat for the trim. It's basically the same method we used earlier for the, for the blue, base coat, shade, highlights. Couldn't be simpler. Uh, we put down all the gold with the Retributor armor, and then we're going to add right Clant Flesh Shade over all the gold, and then afterwards we're going to dry brush a little bit of Liberator Gold over it, and once that Liberator Gold is dried, it doesn't take that long a time, because this of course is dry brushing, then we're going to add a quick and easy dry brush of silver on top of that and of course the reason why we're putting the silver on top after that gold dry brush is to get that higher shine to it now this is like i said we're using these shields for this but you can of course add this to whatever you want be it gold bronze silver metallics be it red green blue orange purple lilac whatever color you want this method works for every different color scheme. So we're using the blue and gold because it fits the shields very well, but this method can be added to whatever color scheme you want. 
And in, of course, all the methods can be added to whatever color scheme you want. Now, since we've done two very, very simple methods, let's do a little bit more complex uh, using a lot more wet blending and feathering and glazing and stuff like that. Now, this time around, we're going for a lot more complex method, like it says on the title. We are going to be using wet blending and feathering and glazing and all kinds of methods for this, but you will get the most fun result. We're starting again with counter blue, but we're not base coating the entire shield. We're just finding our shadow recesses. Then we are going and wet blending a little bit of Thousand Suns blue mixed with counter blue into that. And now we're also mixing in a little bit of Temple Guard blue into that wet blue paint we already have, just to get that solid, multicolored, well, multi-toned base coat on the shield. After these three different colors have been mixed and are looking somewhat okay, there will be a little bit of lines in it. It won't look perfect. We're starting to start glazing the colors together. Both the lighter colors and the darker colors. We're going back and forth, taking whatever is dry and what area is dry and start glazing to find mid-tones and this will give us the color. The glazing bit is used with a fairly thin paint and we have to be careful where we're pulling the paint so droplets and streaks won't turn up. Once we're getting a little bit more satisfied with how the main color is, we're gonna start working a little bit higher highlights. And again we're using Temple Guard Blue mixed with a little bit of white and we're glazing that in getting that sharper light on the shield. And of course, it's gonna start out looking rough. We're in the ugly face, but we will find the nice face. It just takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of patience. And I would definitely not recommend this for an entire army. You will lose your mind because this is a lot of work. Just this little shield takes a lot of time. And of course, on the recess side, on the shade side of this shield, we're also glazing a little bit of light just to have that hint of a curve. And then a little bit of edge highlighting with white mixed with ever so slight amount of blue. Just to get a little bit of shine on the bottom and a little bit of shine in the middle where the light is breaking on top of the curvature of the shield. And of course, just for a little bit of fun, a little bit of light streak just around the shield. It's just to add a little bit of flavor to that small thing. For the shadows, we're adding a little bit of more darkness. This is really watered down matte black. And we're just putting that a little bit around where we want a little bit deeper shadows. Just to give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more interest. Now for the trim, we are starting with a darker gold than we have before. This time we're using Balthazar gold and we're going over the entire trim with that and the hammer. Sorry if the video is not perfect. I took the shield out of frame to paint it. So this is all I got out of that. So we're starting with Balthasar Gold. We're putting that on the shield, uh, on the trim and on the hammer. And then we're going to work our way up from that. Next we're going to take a little bit of water down Retributor Armor. And we're just going to put that where we want more highlights on the gold. A little bit on the front, on the right, where we have the highlights from the blue. You have to be thinking about where you're getting your highlights in. This is like an NMM version of TMM. So we're working the gold uh, like we would be working flat colors. And after we've gone a little bit with the gold, uh, with the retributor armor, we're going to add liberate gold to get a little bit more highlight on it. And then after that, we're going to add a little bit of the Vallejo silver, the air model, air paint. It's awesome to paint with. And we're mixing it together on the wet palette. So we're getting tones between the colors. So we get something really, really, really shiny and interesting and not just a flat line. And we're glazing, we're using thin layers. That's the main idea about this. This method, like I said, takes a lot more time than the other methods, but it looks great. This would be perfect for your bigger models, for your generals, for your heroes. And of course, like the other methods, you can use this on pretty much any unit you want. Just change other colors. Silver, different tones of silver. Brass, different tones of brass with a little bit of red in them. Blue, different tones of blue, different tones of green. All of those different colors, this method 
works wonders and you just have to change what color you're using. Now that we've gone through three different types of painting methods, let's take a look at the, all the shields side by side. And here we have the three shields side by side. And as you can see, there's a hell of a lot of difference between the three. The easy one, the rather easy one, and the highly complex one. They are quite different and, in my opinion, the middle one, the somewhat easy one, that's the most comfortable one to put on your army and the highly complex one for your main units. The quite simple one, it's fine to start out with, but a little bit too easy for my tastes. Thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff social media and various tidbits you do with it what you will like share subscribe and don't shield it from others but until next time farewell <laughs>